in the last stream, we were working on setting up the new simple storage network along with the crafting remote to allow us to wirelessly access all of the items inside of our colossal chest and more importantly craft with those items anywhere in the base so that no longer do we have to run back to this storage of a quest table every time we want to find an item or complete a craft. We also managed to get ourselves the alchemy table and the pink energy collector here to allow us to start transmuting certain items into certain other items. And that is where we're going to start today because my plan for today's episode is going to be to upgrade our blood altar here from tier three to tier four. And that encapsulates basically the remaining quests in the quest line, there are kind of two lines. We've got this line here that runs through the edge of the Hidden Realm Ritual, through the Saturated Tail into the Weak Blood Shard. And then we have this line over here, which runs through the Heat Engine, through the Deployer, and then around to the Weak Blood Shard as well. Those Weak Blood Shards are going to allow us to make large Bloodstone Bricks, and those large Bloodstone Bricks are required for the Tier 4 Blood Altar. If we look once again inside of the Sanguine Sentium, and we go to the Blood Altar, the blood altar and we scroll along to tier four you'll see that it is basically the tier three altar with an extra ring around it and four large bloodstone bricks and those are really the only thing that we're missing to upgrade the altar so i think we'll start over on the right hand side here using the alchemy table to produce blaze powder we can do this with glowstone dust now at the moment i don't think we have any glowstone dust left over however we do have 48 lightning charges here and so just like before if we place those over on our depot we should then be able to put some water into the tank here and convert that into glowstone now one thing we haven't done yet that i think we definitely should do is invest in an aqueous accumulator this thing is super easy to make the only thing that we're missing is a redstone server which is just iron and a redstone and the benefit of the aqueous accumulator is that we don't have to continually use our bucket to pick up every single individual bucket of water that we need to feed to this spout instead what we should be able to do is grab our fluid pipes which might well still be in here they are indeed and if we place down the aqueous accumulator let's say awkwardly we could place it here i'm definitely going to move this but if we did something like this it will work basically if you put water down water source box that is down on two sides of the aqueous accumulator it will then just produce infinite water it kind of acts as the unlimited source block in the middle and then if we use our wrench to set this to extract like so it's then going to take that water around and put it into this tank and then that tank obviously feeds into the spout here and that spout is then going to use that water to turn our lightning charges into glowstone and once we have the glowstone we can of course place that into our alchemy table here and that's going to start to slowly but surely transmute that into blaze powder and i believe we do the exact same thing again to convert the blaze powder into blaze rod so once they're done uh, we just take them out put them back in and that's going to convert that blaze powder into a blaze rod the reason we need the blaze rod is to make the heat engine this doesn't actually seem too difficult we need one of each cogwheel one regular shaft four andesite alloy one copper ingot and then of course the blaze rod so uh, real quick i didn't take the actual blaze powder out and put it in my inventory which is why we didn't complete this quest here but i think we should have basically everything that we need to make the heat engine here we might just have to get a couple of andesite alloy yeah we also need one regular cogwheel but that's not going to be a problem for us are we completely out of shaft i think it might be in our backpack actually it is not i thought i was carrying some shaft around it turns out i'm not that's fine if we want more andesite alloy of course all we have to do is grab some of the andesite that we have in the system and uh, between streams i did go ahead and uh, fill the blood altar up quite a bit just so that we're not waiting around too much in today's episode while we fill up the blood altar even further and we just need to get enough to make shaft for the cogwheel and then just regular alloy for the engine over here our blaze powder is done fantastic and so with that we should hopefully now be able to make the cogwheel and to make the heat engine nice and so the heat engine here which again i have messed up because i put the blaze rod into my inventory before we got the blaze powder and so we've completed the blaze powder quest but now we've not completed the blaze rod quest but either way we need the heat engine in order to make these deployers and we're going to need quite a few of these deployers because if we do a little bit of uh, looking further ahead here 
There were three items we then need to make. We need to make Deep Slate, which we get by smelting Cobbled Deep Slate. And Cobbled Deep Slate, we get by using the deployer to click a Coal Essence onto a Stone Brick. Coal Essence we can get in the Blood Altar with one block of coal and 1,300 life points. That's not too bad. And uh, we can, of course, then just smelt that uh, Cobbled Deep Slate into a regular Deep Slate. We also need the Gobber Globet. This is made in the Hellfire Forge, which we don't currently have. Let me bookmark that with a Polished Rose Quartz, a Coal, a Medium Covalence Dust, and a Diamond. All of that we have. And then right here, a Demon Will, we can, of course, get using the Soul Snares like we did last episode. And then finally, there is the Prismarine Agglomeratio. This is made using the Bio Forge with more Prismarine Shards and Prismarine Crystals. We got these in the last episode. They shouldn't be too difficult. And then it looks like we can combine all of that together using a ton of these deployers specifically four of these deployers and one press and you'll see at the bottom here that we have to do this twice so we need two of each of these two agglomeratia two imbutilates two gobba globbits and two deep slate along with one set of shears that we can run through this process twice to get the sanguine reverter which is what we need if we're going to get the weak blood shard so let's complete that blaze one quest fantastic and then down here how many did we need we needed four deployers and so i think the first thing we should do here is probably see if we can't get four heat engines. I think we definitely should be able to. We just need more andesite. And of course, we can get more andesite using this uh, cobble and gravel recipe. And of course, if I just uh, right click over here, we do have gravel available to us. Yeah, there we go. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and craft up a bunch more andesite. And then let's run that andesite through the blood altar to get more andesite alloy. And approximately 22 andesite alloy later, I think we should have enough andesite alloy to make this happen. I don't think we're gonna have enough cogwheels to make that, but we should have enough shaft and we've got uh, an infinite number of planks at this point. So I need at least four, uh, I guess actually just three is fine because I only need three more of these. And then I don't know if we have three large cogwheels. Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't think that we do. And then of course the uh, the trickiest bit of all of that is that uh, we also need more blaze rods as well. The Twitch chat is correct in that we can kind of duplicate the blaze powder and the blaze rods fairly easily if we use the crushing wheels because of course we can take one blaze rod which we get from one blaze powder and then we can use that blaze rod in the crushing wheels to get more blaze powder we can get a maximum of six blaze powder there's only a 25 percent chance that we do get six but we guaranteed at least three blaze powder and then of course that three blaze powder can then be converted into three blaze rods which will then get you nine blaze powder and so on and so forth it just takes a little bit of time with the alchemy table of course we could take this here and i should really get some kind of hopper up at the top so we don't have to keep uh, climbing up every time we want to do this but real quick if i were to do something along the lines of this that should hopefully push down into so blaze powder we got four nice and of course we can leave this in here to get us four blaze rods while we wait for that to do its thing let's go ahead and craft up a little bit more shift like so to make a couple more of these cog wheels two and three couple we have and blaze rods we're about to have in fact over here we've got two of them we can do one and two and that gets us to four nice okay so now deployer wise if we want to make four deployers, we need four andesite casing. Thankfully, kind of the easiest part of the whole setup here. We just need four dark oak logs, which we can go ahead and throw down, go ahead and debark. And then one, two, three, four, we get ourselves four andesite casing, which we can pick up very easily with the wrench. And at that point, we now just need four brass hands. This bit is probably going to be the trickiest bit. For the four brass hands, we need four andesite alloy. We also need to get 16 brass sheets, which is 16 brass ingots. Brass ingots, not too tricky. We could do it with the smell tree, but I do think the mixer here is going to be easier. It's just copper and zinc. And so if I take a stack of copper and a stack of zinc, because we do have basically infinite copper and infinite zinc via our gravel sifting here, we should be able to throw all of that into the basin. I don't think it's going to matter that there's water in the basin. I'm fairly certain that all that matters now is that we put some fuel into the blaze burner, and that should start converting that zinc and that copper into brass. Nice. It's going to get us uh, two stacks of brass, I believe. And we're only going to need 16 of those going forward. So that really shouldn't be a problem. And then all we have to do with the brass is place it onto our depot here underneath the mechanical press. And we should be good to go. Let's do this. Well, that's Kaplan King. I'll throw the rest back in here just so that we have the brass should we need it in the future. And that was actually way easier than I thought it was going to be. So I think we're pretty much good to go on the deployers here and should be able to start using these to produce some of these items we'll go with the 
deep slate first. That doesn't seem too difficult to do. All we need to do is craft at least one block of coal, although I think we're probably going to need a few of these. Use those, of course, over here to produce the coal essence. And once we have that coal essence, at that point, all we need to do is grab ourselves a deployer, of course, which I'll bookmark, and I believe another depot, which is going to require another one of these uh, andesite casings. Let me quickly go ahead and grab a couple more andesite casing because I do think we're going to want... Actually, I was going to say we might want a few of these, but I think, for the most part, we might be able to get away with using belts instead. How much andesite alloy do I have left? I've got five. I'll use the five that we have to get the remaining andesite casing here. We'll have that in our inventory just for future use. Let's use that to make one depot, and then let's see if we can't make these deployers. So can I make the brass hands? Of course, the brass hands also require andesite alloy. Okay, in that case then, real quick, let's grab more andesite, and let's make at least four more andesite alloy. And once we have four andesite alloy, we should then finally be able to make the four brass hands. One, two, three, four, and four deployers. Nice. So ideally, what we should be able to do here is we should be able to place down our deployer pointing down at a depot. So let's say I put the depot here, and then let's say I place the deployer if I shift right click onto the depot. That does work. We are now overstressed. That's to be expected. I did kind of crank this up to the maximum. And so uh, if we just bring it down a little bit, maybe to like 85. Yeah, that's perfect. So this is now working and this is now ready to deploy onto this depot. So the way this works, if I'm not mistaken, is we craft up our stone brick. We place that stone brick onto the depot. We then take our coal essence and we right click that onto the bottom of the deployer, like basically onto this bottom side anywhere here. And then that's going to deploy the coal essence onto the stone and we get cobble deep slate. Nice, we're gonna smelt that over here to get regular deep slate. And again, looking a little bit further ahead, we need three deep slate if we're gonna get this uh, apparatus armentius. I think that's how that's uh, pronounced. So real quick, let's go ahead and process these other two blocks of coal into coal essence, which thankfully is very quick. And then over here, if we drop on the stone bricks again, we should be able to very quickly get us two more cobbled deep slate. Fantastic. And then if we throw those into the furnace, that should get us all three of the deep slate required for this apparatus armentus. The only things we're missing here are more imbued slates, two gallot blocks. These, I assume are maybe made in the, um, the smeltery, unless there's a way for us to get gallot dust, which I don't see there being a way for that. And so I feel like it could be, although there's no alloy recipe for it either. So I'm not quite sure how we're gonna get this. Oh, I see, it's a recipe in the Hellfire Forge. It's medium and low covalence dust with an amethyst shard and a blaze powder. That is fine. That shouldn't be too difficult, actually. We can work on that in a second. For now, we'll put the uh, the deep slate away and we can look at getting some of the other items here. So the, uh, the gobber here, Oh, this was made in the Hellfire Forge. Okay, of course. So the Hellfire Forge is not too difficult. In fact, we have basically everything apart from another one of these uh, demon wills. Of course, the demon will is uh, made using string. We take our string, we throw it into the blood altar. I'll get a few of these because I feel like we're going to do quite a few of these soul snares today because it looks like quite a few of these crafts do take place in the Hellfire Forge and all of the crafts in the Hellfire Forge require some kind of demon will. So we'll make a couple of these and then... As before, we do need to uh, to grab a mob. Now, unfortunately, we've kind of stacked our cows in such a way that it makes it tricky to take any one cow out of the setup without killing all of the cows. To the point where I think I kind of have to go up. And like, I can steal the top cow, or one of the top cows. That cow didn't quite die, which is good. And then if we just kind of place him down like this, we want to make sure we step back like before, throw the snare, fantastic. And then where is my bone cleaver? Let's make sure this guy dies within the requisite time period. Please don't get caught on fire. Fantastic. That gets us one demon will. We'll do another one in just a second. But now that should be everything for the Hellfire Forge, which we'll go ahead and place down next to our alchemy table. And this is where we can craft things such as the Gobber Globet. For this, we need a coal, a polished rose quartz, a diamond, and a medium covalence dust. Most of this, we already have. The diamond, we should already have. We do indeed. We've got a few of those left. The coal, we've got in our inventory. The medium covalence dust, we also have. The only thing we're missing is the polished rose quartz. But as we saw in the last episode, that is not particularly difficult to make. All we need is some sandpaper. We can once again do something like this and like this. 
fantastic. And if we put all of these into here, we then just need to place our soul snare, and by our soul snare, I mean a demon will, I think, actually, into the Hellfire Forge. We do. So this doesn't actually require any demon will, but we do need to put a demon will into the Hellfire Forge. So for that, let me go steal that other cow that's right at the bottom here, the one that's basically almost dead. Hopefully not so close to being dead that we can't throw a snare at it. And then if we do something like this, fantastic, we can then hopefully get our demon will, fantastic. And if we put that demon will into the Hellfire Forge, I believe that should be everything that we need in order to make our first gobber globbit. And looking forward, we just need two of these actually. And so to be fair, thankfully the demon will is not used up here simply because this recipe didn't require any demon will, but I think we should have everything we need to make another one of these. Let me get another rose quartz here. Again, we'll use the sandpaper to shave that down. Fantastic. And then we do still have three diamonds left. We'll take one of those. We've still got the coal and we still have a ton of medium covalence dust. Boom, 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 and boom. Fantastic. Okay, so that's going to be both of those taken care of. We then, oh, we do need two more deep slate, actually. We need three for the uh, apparatus here, but we need two more for the uh, sanguine reverter because we need it uh, right here at the end. So we are going to have to get two more of those. That's completely fine. And then finally, of course, we just need the uh, prismarine agglomeration, which is really not too bad, actually. We need two of these. I made one at a time. So we're going to need four prismarine for the recipe itself. And then we're also going to need more prismarine on top of that, right? Because it's a one-to-one uh, -one ratio here. So we need basically, I think, eight prismarine to make this work. Eight prismarine is just eight lapis. Lapis we've got in abundance. So we'll take, uh, let's say, 16 lapis and we'll throw that down onto the depot just as soon as uh, we pick up the water here and then use our flint and steel to relight the soul fire. Boom and... Boom, fantastic. Do we have any prismarine left over? We do, actually, never mind. We've got all that we need. Let me take this and this, and then right now our biomancy stuff is aware. I need, I think it was the bioforge, but it actually might have been the bio lab. Let me check the recipe. It is indeed the bioforge. Let's place this guy down. For now, I guess over on this side of the smeltery. Let's say right about here. And just like before, all we should have to do is feed this guy some food, nutrient bars do the trick. And then if we put in both the prismarine shards and the prismarine crystals, that should allow us to make the prismarine agglomeration. This one right here. Perfect. One and two. Nice. Okay. That is, I think, basically everything apart from two imbued slates and two more deep slates. So two more deep slate is just two more blocks of coal in the altar, as well as, of course, two more stone we'll do one and we'll do two does use a fair amount of lp but nothing too crazy stone bricks we have over here let's do the same thing again we'll put those down and we'll put you up here one and two fantastic let's get that smelting over in here and then now we kind of just need to put down our deployers and i do think that the best way for us to set this up is going to involve using conveyor belts something we've not done so far but something that i do think is going to be worth doing so the uh, conveyor belts right here these mechanical belts are made with a dried kelp which we do have and one belt thankfully is going to be enough we could get more though if we needed to write drying kelp is not going to take us that long we can do it on the campfire but uh, i think one should do it and essentially what we want to do here i'm going to get rid of this uh, horrible pipe because again this is not a uh, permanent fixture of the base basically what we want to do here is place down a belt long enough for all four deployers and a mechanical press how hard is the mechanical press to make I don't know if it's worth making another one of these. They're not that expensive, so I will go ahead and do it. But uh, I feel like we're only going to use it for this one craft. But either way, we need a belt that is at least five blocks long because we want to complete this craft right here on the belt. You could do it on um, depots, but I don't think it is as good. I think basically what we want to do is go one, two, three, four, five. And then I think ideally we want this to be at least one or two longer. Let's go one longer. Let's put a shaft here. Let's put a shaft. Ooh, one, two, three, four, five. Let's put a shaft here like this. We're going to get in the way of, uh, of this setup. But I think basically if we take our mechanical belt, we can right click on this side of the shaft, right click again on this side of the shaft. We can then get rid of the andesite. This was just to, uh, to count the blocks here. And now we want to connect this up to our pre-existing system. So for that, we're probably going to want at least one gearbox which i'm hopeful we have the ability to make for whatever reason it doesn't like putting the dark oak planks in for the recipe on the uh, cogwheels not entirely certain why do we have enough andesite alloy of course we don't that would be far too easy thankfully the andesite alloy is extremely quick to make and so getting more shaft is not a problem and then we can uh, kind of manually force it to use the uh, dark oak planks here like so to get more cogwheels we'll get a bunch of these and then we'll use some of them 
to make a gearbox. And I'm hopeful that what we can then do is kind of use one cogwheel to kind of pull, or actually, I guess maybe even a few cogwheels to pull off here. So I'm gonna put the gearbox down here. It does need to be a vertical gearbox, so we'll craft it like so. And then my thought process here is that if we grab some shaft, we can kind of run this up and then we can just use cogwheels here and here to start spinning this belt. And thankfully, it's spinning in the right direction. Nice. So now all we want to do is place down our deployers and our mechanical press. We can do this by shift right clicking onto the part of the belt where we're going to deploy to and press to, like so. And now we just need to get mechanical energy into these guys for then. I think it's gonna be worth rotating these. And for that, I think you wanna right click on the bottom like this, because if we rotate them like this, they can now all be powered by rotational energy that comes in right here. To do that though, I think we are once again going to need another gearbox, which of course <laughs> requires yet more of the cogwheels, which requires yet more shift because we are now basically completely out of shift. Again, not a problem for us. Let's do one and two. Fantastic, get ourselves another set of shaft. Let's go ahead and get a couple more cogwheels if we have dark cog planks, which we do. And then we can make ourselves another gearbox. That gearbox is gonna go down right about here. Again, I'm thinking of the best way to do this. I think we might have to go kind of up and then back down. So I think again, I want a vertical gearbox here like this. And then from there, I'm thinking if we put a cogwheel down on top of this cogwheel and on top of this gearbox, we can hopefully kind of just run that along over to here so if we use the two cogwheels that we have ideally trying not to get burnt at the same time i'm hopeful that this and this will do the trick of course we are once again over stressed but that's fine we can bring this down to let's say 70 nope let's say 65 how about 57 57 is good enough all right and you'll see now that all of these are online and basically good to go. So what we want to do now is we want to put all of the right items into the right slots here. So for that, we need shears, and then we need to place the right items in the right slots. Those being the prismarine agglomeratio into the first slot. Uh, that is in our inventory. Let's put that down here. Then in the second slot, we have imbued slates. We'll get those in a second. The third slot is the gobber globets. These guys right here, those are going to go into slot number three, like so. Then slot number four is deep slate. We need two deep slate. Uh, that is in the furnace, but we can take two out of here and place them in slot number four. And then the final slot isn't anything. It's just the mechanical press. So the only thing we're missing is two imbued slates. I do believe we have some reinforced slates. We do indeed. Each imbued slate does require 5,000 LP. And so we are going to have to once again get the old sacrificial dagger out to uh, take us up to 5,000. And we'll have to do this, of course, twice. And once we've got two imbued slates, we can again put those into slot number two. And at that point, I think we're good to go. So let's take our shears and we can basically drop these down here. And then they're going to one by one get utilized with the items that are here. Now, of course, the quest book does show that this has to be done twice. So we're going to take this incomplete sanguine reverter and we're going to place it back by dropping it onto the start of the belt. It's going to go through again. And if this is guaranteed, which I really hope it is, then we should get a sanguine reverter. Nice. The reason I questioned whether or not it was guaranteed is because over here, this precision mechanism isn't guaranteed. There's usually a, an 80% chance that you get this. It looks like the recipe has been tweaked for this pink, so you are guaranteed to get it. But I believe by default, this is um, not guaranteed to be created. So either way, we do now have our sanguine reverter. And so now we need to get this apparatus over here, which did just require the deep slate as well as an ingot that we were going to make in the Hellfire Forge, right? So we need 18 of these gallot ingots but then we are going to need 18 medium covalence dust 18 low covalence dust 18 blaze powder and 18 amethyst shards so the covalence dust is fine we have 18 low covalence dust and we have 18 medium covalence dust as for the amethyst shards we have 11 of them but we should be able to make more we just need to get eight more amethyst essence which is just eight more high covalence dust which we also have so we'll take that and we'll run that through the altar in just a second. Other than that, the final piece of the puzzle is 18 blaze powder. For 18 blaze powder, we have two options, of course. We could use the 18 glowstone that we have, but I think it's gonna be slightly more practical if we uh, kind of keep processing the blaze rods that we already have. So if we take these, run them through the crushing wheels to get somewhere between six and 12 blaze powder back, we got eight, and then we'll run this through to make more blaze rods, then we'll run them through again. And uh, we'll keep doing that over and over until we have 18 blaze powder. 
while we wait for that, let's go ahead and make the amethyst crystals and the two required imbued slates. All right, so a little while later, we now have 28 blaze powder. I also got the required amethyst essence, and we can craft that, of course, into these amethyst shards. And then back over here, if we put in the low and medium covalence dust with 18 amethyst shards and 18 blaze powder, we should start to slowly but surely get all of the gallot ingots that we need to make the two gallot blocks. And then other than that, we already have the magician's blood orb. We have the deep slate, we can make a furnace, I guess, because right now we only have this furnace right here. But now I am gonna use this furnace because we don't really use it all that often. Most of the smelting we do can also be done with the smoker. And so uh, real quick, while that's smelting, I'm gonna get rid of this uh, horrible array of stone and brick that I put down to get up to the uh, the grindstone. Let me get rid of uh, these guys, fantastic. But uh, yeah, we'll use these for now. We'll also take the prismarine that we got going earlier and uh, we'll drop that back into the system. And once this is done, we then just need to get the alchemical reaction chamber. It does say that uh, there's a way to make this and I forget it every time. Oh here, use on displacement rune to turn into ARC. So the alchemical reaction chamber doesn't have a recipe, bizarrely. We have to take the apparatus right here and we have to right click it onto a displacement rune, which is this one right here. The displacement rune is just three buckets of water, which is just gonna be more iron for us. That is completely fine. Let me get two more buckets and let's grab some water. One and two, fantastic. That is gonna use up another one of the imbued slates that we just made. So we are gonna have to make another imbued slate to actually make this work. That should be fine. Over here, we've got a fair number of life points. Let's make sure we eat our nutrient bricks here to keep our saturation going up so we can get to over five buckets worth. Five buckets of life essence should get us the imbued slate. That's just a little bit more required. And there we go, nice. Okay, cool, back over here, how is this doing? It is done, fantastic. Let's do something like this to get two of these blocks and then hopefully we should have everything that we need to make this guy right here. We just need the deep slate, which I thought we had. Did I use the deep slate to make something else by accident? I know we used two deep slate to make this over here, but I thought we had extra deep slate. It's not in the furnace, right? I don't think the furnace picks that stuff up. It doesn't. I'm wondering if we shift clicked in a recipe that required cobblestone or something and we used deep slate instead. That's not ideal, but it's also not terrible. We can get three more blocks of coal and we can make more deep slate. It's not ideal, but, um, but it is fixable, thankfully. So three deep slate later. Let's get that smelted up over into here. That is going to allow us to, uh, to complete this craft here. And then once this is all done, and once we have the uh, alchemical reaction chamber, we then need to get this saturated tower, which involves this uh, kind of left-hand side of the quest book here. Of course, this does require some kind of fuel. Let's get you in there. And that should be everything for the apparatus for the ARC. And then that's gonna get us towards the weak blood shard. We have the sanguine reverter. The final leg of this is the saturated tail. But then we need to get one of each of these inscription tools here for water, earth, fire, and air. And so for that, let me type in inscription tool. Let me bookmark all four of these. Each one is made in the blood altar. Each one costs 1000 LP and each one requires a different item. We need glowstone, nether quartz, lapis, and grass. I think we have all of it. Uh, lapis was in block form. We'll take that. Uh, let me clear my inventory a little bit as well because we've got a lot of stuff in here that we don't necessarily need to keep with us at all times. And then glowstone was dust. That's fine. Uh, grass was a block of grass. Also fine. And then nether quartz was just a single piece of nether quartz. Also fine. The deep slate is done. Let's go ahead and make the apparatus. Of course, we're just missing the furnace, which we're going to steal and boom. And then from there, we need to place down our displacement rune and right click it with the apparatus, shift right click it, sorry, and we get the ARC, nice. So we can place our reverter into here, this guy like so, and again, now we need that saturated tail. So let's head on up to the altar. Do we have 4,000 LP? We do not, we have 2,000. That's fine, one use of the knife should take us up over 4,000, and that should be enough to get us all four of these inscription tools. Once we have all four of those, we then need to get 
the weak activation crystal here. This is made by putting the lava crystal into the blood altar with 10,000 life points. We did make the lava crystal in the last episode because it was also required in the creation of the pink energy collector. Thankfully, uh, this doesn't get used up in the crafting of the pink energy collector, but it is going to get used up over here just as soon as we get 10,000 life points into this altar, which again, with the nutrient bars, uh, shouldn't take too long at all. And there we go. We have a weak activation crystal. Nice. And so now the edge of the hidden realm is where we're going to go next. So we need to make the ritual diviner. Thankfully, it's pretty easy to make. It does, however, require four diamonds, and we currently only have two of them, but we should be able to once again do this recipe right here with the two exotic dust, three bioluminescent goo, and three gem fragments with the exotic compound, of course, to get diamonds. We just need to kind of reset up our biomancy setup using things like the bioforge and the bio lab. All right. And boom, we got 10 more diamonds. Nice. Okay, that wasn't too bad. I've reset up a few of the uh, biomancy machines over here. Most of that stuff, fairly easy to get. The uh, exotic dust can be acquired as well with uh, blaze rods now. And it's pretty good, actually. You get two um, exotic dust per blaze rod, so it's uh, guaranteed, which is nice. And of course, we can just duplicate the blaze rods using the alchemy table and the crushing wheel. So not bad at all. With that done, we were getting the ritual diviner, which I think we now have everything to make we do and so with the ritual diviner we now need to get the ritual of the edge of the hidden realm up and running so for that we can take the ritual diviner and if we shift right click you can cycle through the different rituals available we are after the ritual of the edge of the hidden realm this one right here and so for that if we check the book over here and i think we can just type in edge we can this is the ritual for the Edge of the Hidden Realm. It requires six water runes, 10 fire runes, 16 earth runes, and four air runes. So we need a total of 34 runes, and we need 80,000 life points inside of our blood network. So that's the uh, the blood orb, not inside of the uh, blood altar, thankfully. Uh, right now, we have a grand total of 496. So we can put this in here, and uh, we can, of course, keep doing this to transfer life essence into our blood network. And, oh, I've not connected, that's my bad, I've not connected this Magician's Blood Orb to the network. There we go, now it's going to start filling up with life points. We need 80,000 in there. On top of that, we need to get all of those required runes. I think it said 36 were required. And uh, when it says runes, I believe we need ritual stones, is what we need here. So, in order to get the ritual stones, it's the same recipe that we saw previously. We've got four of them before, but we need 32 more of these in order to get these other ritual stones, the air, water, fire, earth. I'm not quite sure why it says rune inside of the book, but I'm pretty sure it means ritual stones. But uh, the good news is, is that we don't actually have to craft them into the air, water, fire, or earth variants. We can just have them in our inventory and the ritual diviner will do that for us. What we have to do is we have to craft up 36 ritual stones. And for that, we're gonna have to get a fair bit more rose quartz and a fair number more of these reinforced slates. Thankfully, these are a lot cheaper than the imbued slates, and so hopefully it won't take us too long here to get 32 ritual stones. All right, so 36 reinforced slates later and 18 polished rose quartz later, I think we're now good to go. Let me get 36 rose quartz tiles, and then that should be enough to get us 36 more ritual stones. So long as we put in our magician's blood orb, we do this, we do this, and shift click perfect so that does take us to 40 not to 36 the reason for that is that uh, we do need to make a master ritual stone and the master ritual stone in and of itself requires four ritual stones as well as four storage network roots which thankfully are not too difficult to make can we make four of these we almost can we just need one more set of network cable again does require the blood orb thankfully the blood orb not used in the creation process and so Boom, there's our fourth storage network route, and that should be everything for the master ritual stone. Again, it does require a non-used blood orb in the center. Perfect. And so now, back over here, we should be able... People were suggesting picking up the uh, reaction chamber. That's not a bad idea either. This will complete the quest. Perfect. And then we can place that back down. Boom and boom. Uh, but now we need to actually get this portal open. So... 
I think what I'll do is I might put it down here, actually. I built this area down here. The plan for this, by the way, is uh, for the Tranquility Altar. In the next stream, I want to look at setting a Tranquility Altar up so we can get more from each of our life point deposits. But down here, what we should be able to do is we should be able to place down the Master Ritual Stone and I believe right click on it with the Ritual Diviner to begin constructing this right here. You'll see the Master Ritual Stone is there at the center bottom. So if we put that down like this, so long as this space is big enough, yeah, we should be able to begin right clicking on here. And if we hold our runes, we'll see those going down. It's gonna basically take all those Ritual Stones out of our inventory and place them down in the correct orientation. Nice. Now to activate it, we need to right click the Master Ritual Stone here with the weak activation crystal. But to make it work, we need 80,000 life points inside of our network. And so right now we got almost 5,000. We need to continue doing the same thing we did previously. Place this in, use our dagger to refill that. Um, I did set this drawer up temporarily to allow us to uh, more quickly pull the runes out when they were the correct runes. And so I could just kind of put them in like we did previously. But uh, real quick, now I'm going to go ahead and continually eat my nutrient bricks, use the dagger, and continue doing that until we have 80,000 LP inside of our blood orb. Okay, so it took a little bit of time and a lot of nutrient bars, but we are now at 80,000 life points inside of our blood network. And so down here, we should be able to right click the weak activation crystal onto the master ritual stone. And in theory, a rush of energy flows through the ritual. Boom, we get the portal to the hidden realm. So we have to go there to complete the quest. However, I do believe that if we're going to go there, we should get some armor because I believe that it is not a particularly friendly place. And armor wise, we should move some of these off into our curious slot to free up our armor slots. Armor wise, I feel like we want to go for diamond armor. We have eight diamonds here, but we can make more fairly easily. We just need to do this craft here two more times, which really wasn't too difficult when I did it uh, the last time over here. And so real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and make ideally 20 more diamonds and then we'll come back, we'll make some diamond armor and we will head through to see if we can't find some saturated town. And again, a little bit of biomancy later. I believe that is everything for 20 more diamonds, which should be more than enough for us to get our full set of diamond armor with enough left for a diamond sword as well. So there's our pants. Let's get a set of boots and let's also do the helmet. Perfect. And then we'll get a sword as well, just to be safe. Okay, so with our new armor now, we should be able to clear our inventory. Although I am fairly certain that the remote works cross-dimensionally. So if we right click on this center pillar here, that's gonna take us through into the hidden realm. The center room here is not particularly dangerous at all. And oh, so I believe the remote does work across dimensions, but only if your base is chunk loaded. Our base is not chunk loaded. And so that's why we're not seeing anything here. We can use these iron keys, by the way, to open these doors. And the idea here is that we're gonna open these doors. Behind these doors is probably gonna be a lot of mobs. Uh, right now, they're not anything, there's not anything here, by the way. I believe right now there's, uh, if we ch had some kind of map, it would show that it's empty. The room is kind of generated when you right click with the key, but we're looking for either a saturated tau or a saturated tau seed. So if we right click here, it's gonna produce a door. This is where we wanna have our sword at the ready. Iron tips, that's not what we're after. I will take the obsidian though, that's probably quite useful. I don't see any mobs here, which is, is a good start. The, the furnaces are interesting. We can always come back for those in the future. Don't necessarily think we need the iron ingots either. There is some tau fruit here, which I believe we could use to get um, maybe some tau seeds. I think you might be able to plant that actually um, to get more in the future. Hello, my friend. This is what we are prepared to fight. Uh, I was expecting a lot more dudes here. Unbreaking three and efficiency five is pretty good though. And uh, fortune one and efficiency three is also very good. Uh, there's some more stuff here that we could potentially come back for if we wanted to, but um, no saturated Town, unfortunately. Also quite a bit of iron, which again, we could come back for. It's possible there might be some stuff hiding out under here. There is, there's a mob farm that I'm gonna, um, I was gonna break it, but I don't know if we necessarily need to. For now, I think I'll just block this guy in so he doesn't come and, and fight me. But uh, if we need to fight zombies, we could always come back for that. Uh, I might live to regret that decision, but uh, let's try a different dog here. This is essentially the same room. It's usually not the same room again and again and again. Uh, again, we can always come back though if we need any of these in particular. Like there's quite a few fortune 
uh, items that we could potentially look at using later on down the line. I will definitely take diamonds. That's uh, a no-brainer. I did hear a zombie. Hello, my friend, with resistance at the ready. But unfortunately, again, no saturated town. You can just find it. Again, we could break this, but I think it's just going to be another zombie. So I don't think that's necessarily worth it. We've only got one iron key left. We can make more of them, but they do require... Uh, we should also block this door in as well, just so we don't get chased down by more zombies. We can make more iron keys, but they are a little expensive in that they require imbued slates, and they actually require will. Uh, Will-wise, we have to kind of complete this section of the quest book up here. Right now, we've not done that, so we are kind of putting our faith. Usually, these rooms are different. I'm not at all certain why we're getting the same room every single time but um i guess we'll take some of this stuff here and we will hope maybe somewhat needlessly yeah i was really hoping uh, that we would get a saturated town here we didn't but i do believe that we might be able to still get a saturated town at home potentially using the um the town that we have so it does mention in the quest book here it says if you have bad enough luck to not get any saturated tau from the edge of the hidden realm. Here's how to make it. You need to do the ritual of the green grove, then place the farm under vote, plant the tau fruit and stand on it. There's a chance to convert it into the tau plant. So that's what it says. However, I do believe that if we do the sigil of the green grove, which is one of these here, if I type in green grove, I think the sigil should work. I don't think we need to do the ritual. And so what we can potentially do here is get our arcane ashes back out, which we do still have, I believe. We do, they're in our backpack here. And then we just need to get this uh, growth reagent, which is two samplings, one sugar cane, one sugar. Sugar and sugar cane we have. They go hand in hand, of course. Samplings we also have. We'll take two of those. And then the growth reagent is just in the alchemy table. So over here, let's do this, let's do this, let's do these two, and then let's do our... Blood Orb. We need more life points in our network. I don't think it's the case that we just need to swap that out. That would be uh, too easy. I assume that we're probably quite low on life points now because we used a lot of them for the uh, creation of that portal. We need 2,000 life points here. That is actually completely fine, though, uh, because we can just go ahead and place one of our Blood Orbs back in over here. And then, of course, uh, we should be able to use the dagger once. Nice. That should get us over 2,000 LP. Over here, this hopefully will complete once all of the uh, life points make their way in, which I guess is taking a second here. This is where more speed runes would help as well. Once that's done, though, this should be good to go. It is indeed. And at that point, we should be good to make the Sigil of the Green Grove. We just need a reinforced slate, which again is uh, more life points, actually. So let me take this back out. Let's eat one of our nutrient bricks. And as soon as we have 2,000 life points in the blood altar here, we'll get that transformed and we'll make the Green Grove Sigil. And one slate later, we can take our Reagent, and we can hopefully make this work. So once again, we take our Arcane Ashes, we draw our circle on the ground. This time around, we right-click with the Growth Reagent, and then right-click with the Reinforced Slate. That's going to get us the Sigil of the Green Grove. And then from there, I think we just want to plant down the Tau Fruit onto a piece of dirt. So we take our... Uh, town fruit here plants it onto the dirt we might have to hoe that if we want it to plant we do and then the sigil of the green grove is going to pull life essence from our network so we do want to have some in there we do have a few in there if i stand on top of this and i activate the sigil that should cause this to grow it is going to damage us as it grows but the reason it damages you and we can turn this off now is because it turns into a saturated tail. Uh, we do need to get it to fully grow though, actually. So let me uh, do this a bit more. There we go. And I think I'm right clicking it. It's not doing it. Can I shift right click? I can. Uh, not shift right click. I used Ultimine there. Saturated tail. Nice. Okay, that's actually much easier than fighting your way and uh, making a billion keys to find different rooms in the uh, hidden realm. So finally, chat. If we put this into the alchemical reaction chamber with the sanguine reverter, it should process hopefully into weak blood shards nice we can then take that weak blood shard and we can use it to make bloodstone bricks we should have everything that we need to make that we do indeed and as i mentioned at the start of the episode the large bloodstone bricks here are the only limiting factor for us getting 
a tier four altar because we just need four bloodstone bricks, which we now have. And so now, next time, chat, we can come back. We can move this altar up. What I'll probably do between streams is uh, move the altar up a couple of blocks so that we can uh, keep it kind of in the same place, but um, higher with the tier four set around it. Between streams, I'll also go ahead and make some more blank runes so that we can fill it in and get it going. And yeah, once we have the tier four altar, we can then begin with the well chapter, the third of five chapters here in the quest book. I do also think that uh, next time we'll come back and we'll look at upgrading this incense altar as well. And uh, once we have a tier four altar, we can really go to town on the incense altar and really get a massive boost to the amount of LP we get every time that we sacrifice. And chat is right in that we do need this uh, second tail fruit here because we can use it to get another blood shard, which we can then use to get the master blood orb, which is going to be required. So we can just throw this in here. That's going to get us another blood shard. Obviously the first one's used for the bricks there. That's fine. This one here can be used for the orb and if we wanted to we could also grow more using the sigil of the green grove which didn't really use that many of our life points it did use a few we went from 4900 down to 4400 but not too bad at all uh, and of course we can regenerate our health with the nutrient bar not a problem whatsoever but the altar is a problem for future isaac for now i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this episode of project sacrifice there